Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the European Crossover Webinar. And we are seeing the euro just a tad bit uh, weaker. I guess uh, seeing a little bit of uh, some dollar strength. Not much. We actually saw the euro move towards uh, will be a, a resistance that we were looking at. Uh, bear with me. I moved my screens around. I'm having a hard time getting the mouse to them. Hold on a minute. There we go. Um, but we were looking uh, for around, uh, well, there's with some resistance at 21.79, but that's on the cash, and at 21.90, and I think that's where we're having our um, bias chart resistance. Let's go and take a look real quick. I'm going to just see what we have as far as news, as far as economic data. Doesn't look like we have any economic data today. What well, should we do? We have a uh, UK Halifax house index, uh, price index. That was actually just went by about an hour ago, well, not, about half an hour ago. And we do have at the bottom of the hour, Eurozone Centix investor confidence uh, forecasted for 14, previous one was 13. Um, See, uh, and then we, nothing until we roll into the states, and then we get uh, ISM uh, business conditions for April. And ISM New York for April. Both are at 945 Eastern, so pretty light. Uh, Eurozone Centex Index is the only thing coming up um, in the next. Um, less than half an hour at the bottom of the hour. But uh, nonetheless, like I said, um, let's go move back in here with the Euro. We're in a bit better and take a look at the cable. Wow. I hadn't taken a look at it. I'm just working with some other software. Uh, but boy, look at this thing. Of course, it's on the futures, but I think the futures and the cash, uh, let's see. Yeah, there's only a, a four pip difference. So we're trading 4076 on the cash. So boy, we've made some pretty good runs here. Uh, we can just go on, let's see here. Bear with me because I can kind of move my screens around a little bit. Boy, look at this thing going to the moon. Um, let's go put on the daily. Oh, we're actually at some resistance here, 4080. I think that might even be our bus chart resistance here. But look at that right there at 4080. We just nicked it too, it appears. High on this move is 4079. We're two pips off of that right now. I'll tell you what, we might as well just go and jump into the analysis. Let me just go on and get the bias chart ready. And we're going to start with the euro. So the euro posted the best weekly close in four months on Friday, opening a challenge to 22.57. Resistance to start the week will be 2193 with support at 2095. There's actually a little bit of resistance at 2079, and the high today so far has been 2077. So, but um, 
it was so close between, um, and I don't know why I put 20, uh, yeah, that is correct, 2193, but um, the high so far has been 2177. I have resistance at 2179 and 2193, but they're so close with that, well, we'll just show where that would be the, uh, before we start to, we were to move beyond that, that would be it, but um, yeah, 21, we'll go with the 2193, but we had some at 79, then 93. Bear with me. And support is going to be 2095 followed by 2024. So 2095. And then on to the cable. We're backing off a little bit right now. We just came up, look at that, we just talked about that. We backed off 10 pips, actually 12 pips already. Um, so the cable closed a week on its highs at resistance level 3984. Resistance to start the week with 4034, followed by 4080. You can see that right there. We just got up as high as uh, 4079. So Within a pip, less than a pip, actually, it's 4079.3. Support will be 3903 followed by 3845. So, there we go. 4080. And support 3903. On to the Aussie dollar. So the Aussie broke the daily cycle of up down day with a consecutive positive close resistance. I don't know why that did not update. It's really ridiculous. And I think that's a system issue because I know I pasted it in there. Let me go on and uh, go there to pull that up. So the Aussie posted its best weekly close in three months. Resistance to start the week will be 79.04, followed by 79.94. Support will be 78.55, followed by 76.57. So there we go. And actually, I actually had the weekly. Seventy nine of four, and support was going to be seventy eight fifty five. And then on to the dollar yen.
The Dalian spent the week vacillating, spent the past week vacillating in a range uh, with key level 957 on the upside and 853 on the downside. Resistance to start the week will be 933 with support at 808. So we have a fairly wide range at the end. And on to the Castor Index. So the dollar index faded ahead of NFP closing sub 91 support on, here's the same thing. I know I put them in, but it's ridiculous. For sure, we have the uh, analysis up on Forex Analytics. Go back to that. Now that it's TD Ameritrade, the TOS system, because I know I saved it. Um, the dollar index posted its weekly, its lowest weekly close in four months. All signs point to a test of 89.70, which will be support followed by 89.42. Resistance will be 90.89 followed by 91, should say 67. So let's see here. Obviously, still bearish. Let's go on and move into Bitcoin. So Bitcoin has rebounded from the move two weeks prior to the test of the 48,000 area. Resistance for the week will be 57,950, um, followed by 59,200. Holy smokes, looks like we already got there. 59,200, hang on. Yeah, we even got to 59,511. Holy smokes, I didn't even think, and I was even thinking the market was looking like it was going to slide a bit and... I was thinking, well, I'll still put the, the one beyond that. I'm glad I did. 59,200 and support would be 55,044. And with that, we'll go and move into the uh, S&P. So 
So the S&P finished another week at new highs. Market will be targeting a move to 42.65 with initial resistance at 42.35. Looks like they're out of gas at 42.38. So there's our initial resistance, which is 42.38 to 42.35. And support will be 42.04 followed by 41.80. Let's do 4204 for right now. Unless we really break hard, it doesn't look likely at this point. Let's go and move into the NASDAQ. So the NASDAQ tested 13,800 on Friday. And we're looking at the two hour chart. The NASDAQ tested 13,800 on Friday <clears throat> before pairing back. The index closed at the key two hour level of 13,715 closing exactly at 13.710. Resistance will be 13.820, 13.820, followed by the pivot at 13.954. Support will be 13,600, followed by 13,525. So 13,600. And we've been fading for most of the morning. Actually, we're a little bit higher now. Um, there is some resistance around the 13,690 uh, if you're short it, right? I mean, if you're playing it. Uh, right now, our immediate resistance is going to be 13,715 and just be in the safe zone right there, right there 13,743. And move on to the gold market. And bear with me. I'm still trying to get used to this mouse. It's flying all over the place. I hooked up another screen. It threw all the screens off. And I guess I could, yeah, you know what? I should just go on. I'm going to have to do that after the show. Uh, rearrange the screens on the, um, the Windows tab. So hang on. I'm going to do it now, but. So gold posted a strong close to the week following the Yellen rate scare. Gold will be targeting 1877 for the immediate target. Resistance will be 1850, and we're just shy of that, uh, with support at 1814 followed by 1803. And on to crude oil.
So uh, WTI defended this <clears throat> the $64 level on Friday, posting a hammer on the daily chart. Support to start the week will be 64.29, with resistance at 65.50. Looks like we did get up just beyond that 65.50 earlier. So 64.29. And 65.50 on the upside. And there's the bias chart. I knew when to look at uh, platinum and palladium, and we'll do that. There we go. Well, we're doing pretty good. We, we broke out of this range. See that big old range we've been in here? So we finally broke out of it. We really need to get a daily close above that uh, area, 1249. And we just did that just on, on Thursday. And then on Friday, we kind of daily dallied around here, uh, 1256. And now we're pushing even higher. So your next expectation is going to be right there. 12, basically 1288. And let's go to palladium. Palladium is looking pretty good. Uh, remember, we came down here. Wow, look at how they cleaned out the stops below the 161%. And we closed actually with a negative bar, but we still defended it on Friday. So looking very, very good right now. We do need to get above 29 basically 2980 and that would set us to re-challenge 3000 uh, 3, so we're looking pretty good there so that'll do it uh, i'll get the bias chart posted and thanks for joining us here on the european crossover webinar